Well, hello, beautiful people. You are looking so great today. Hope you're having an awesome day. And today's video is going to be about disappointing products. These are some things I've tried recently, and for one reason or another, we're kind of lackluster. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, before we get started, these are my personal opinions. If we disagree on something, it's literally just makeup, it's not that serious. And every time I do one of these videos, people are like, oh my god, you're so negative. But you clicked on a video that has a negative title, so I don't know what you expect. I'm sorry, but let's get into it. There's only one of these things that is absolutely horrible. So let's start off with that one. Let me rant and rave about that one real quick. First thing that is absolutely horrible, oh my god. I was going to make a dedicated video on it, but I keep putting it off, and I don't think I'm ever going to do it. And I was going to put this in my monthly favorites and fails, but I forgot one or two points, so I just cut that out of the video. Hello, my sworn enemy, it feels like. The Makeup Revolution can seal and define infinite... 24 hour concealer. This is what the packaging looks like so you know how to avoid this thing at all costs. I got this on launch day. I ordered this with a pair of uh, foaming lashes and it was my total old order with those two things. And um, I really beat myself about buying this. It was only $11. I thought the Conceal and Define regular concealer was fine. The Conceal and Hydrate I love. It's actually the only concealer I'm wearing today is the Conceal and Hydrate under my eyes, nothing else. And I really enjoy the Conceal and Hydrate so good. It's only $9. This one's 11. It's the new one. It's supposed to be like full coverage, no creasing, amazing. Let's see what it says on it. It's the Infinite Long Wear Concealer Crease Proof Infinite Coverage. This is in the shade C1. There's a great shade range on this one, by the way. It smells devastatingly like paint. Like it's very fragrancy like paint. It's like the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. It's so paint-like. It makes it so like highly scented that it makes my under eyes really sensitive. It makes my eyes like sensitive when I wear it. And I never have that problem. I don't have problems with like fragrance products usually. I don't make my eyes sensitive with that. The only thing, like I never have sensitive with certain eyeshadows. Some people have reactions to that. The only thing that ever bothers my eye is when I like put my lash glue too close to the inner part of my eyelid. That is the only thing that ever bothers me. This irritates me. It is so heavily paint fragranced <laughs> that it makes my eyes super sensitive. It also is not crease proof. It creases, it separates. It looks like it's on top of your skin, not like laid into your skin, like nice, natural. It's, and the coverage is like, the coverage is like medium, if that. It really doesn't cover purple. If you have any discoloration that's more on the pink side, it does a great job of evening that out. But purple discoloration, it does not handle like a full coverage infinite concealer does. And really the creasing, as well as the paint smell, even if it does smell like paint and make my eyes sensitive. The creasing is terrible and the coverage is not there. So honestly, this is my sworn enemy. I do like the giant doe foot. It claims to be 16 hours of coverage. It does not. Whenever you set it with a powder, dusting it with a brush, using a very minimal amount of product, or packing it on with a sponge, it doesn't agree with whatever powder I use. The only powder it kind of agrees with is the Milk Makeup Blur Powder. But honestly, garbage. I wish it wasn't too late to return this because I totally would. Now that we got the worst of the worst out of the way, please don't buy that product. Like, I don't like telling people what to buy or what not to buy, but oh my gosh, save your money on that one. I was thinking about using it as an eyelid primer so not wasting it, but it makes my eyes so sensitive I can't even do that. So maybe it'd be good for someone, just not me. I don't even want it in my house. The next thing that I absolutely love the finish of, but the shade range is pure garbage and they don't have a lighter shade it is the wander beauty nude illusion liquid foundation they don't have really deep shades they don't have really fair shades this is the lightest one it is the shade fair and whenever your shade is just fair or deep and that's the two ends of the spectrum there's nothing in between like there's nothing lighter than that there's nothing deeper than that there's an issue this is a shade fair it really doesn't look that dark <laughs> am i just gonna mess up my makeup by doing this Oh, you can't even tell. It looks alright there. It's not. It's too dark for me by a long shot. Honestly, on top of my foundation, though, it doesn't look terrible. It looks like a pretty good match, but on its own, she looks rough. <laughs> it is way too dark for me for being the fairest shade. The complexion of it is like a slightly dewier version of the Pure Love Yourself Selfie, so the finish is stunning. If you are darker than me but not super deep you are somewhere in the middle where like most people are kind of a medium shade this is a beautiful foundation like the finish is gorgeous 
and I'm still <laughs> the liquidy sound. I'm still really a fan of the big doe foot. I'm also a fan of this kind of squeezy tube so you can like squeeze and get the product around the doe foot better. I like that. I love the packaging of this. <sighs> the shade range sucks though. I have to mix it in with something to wear it. Which sometimes I have no problem with mixing foundations and other days I just want to use my doe foot applicator and slather on my face. So this is irritating. Disappointed and doesn't match. The next foundation that was disappointing, I got this from Marshalls. So I guess I shouldn't be, like, shocked that it's not great. It's the Laura Mercier Silk Cream Moisturizing Photo Edition Foundation. Whenever I buy makeup from TJ Maxx or Marshalls nowadays, I Google it in the store before I buy it um, to make sure it's okay. And the reviews of this were right. Some were not great, some were right. It's just too oily. <laughs> like, it's a silk cream moisturizing, and I was hoping for, like, a nice dewy finish. It's super oily looking, and I have dry skin. So that's my issue with this one. This is in Vanilla Ivory. The shade is okay. It's not perfect. It's kind of dark, but it's not perfect. I mean, but I can like mix it. And since it's a liquid, not a doe foot, it's easier to mix, I guess. I don't know. Besides the shade not being a perfect match, which there were tons of shade options. It's not my fault. Like the Wander, View and the Wander Beauty one. This is Liza Gets. That's totally their fault. It's just oily. It's just not oily. I don't know. I only used it once and I'm not a fan. I won't use it again, probably. Okay, so I don't like saying bad things about indie brands because you know they're they're trying to get their start usually for the smaller brand, but I really didn't like these. And I thought they got lost in the mail because they took forever to get here. Like they took forever to get here. I don't know where they came from. It's the Belagante liquid lipsticks. I ordered two of them when they're having a sale. I got Fuzzy Sweather and Angel. So we got like a cool tone. It's kind of well, it's not a cool tone. It's kind of a cool tone brown. I got a brown and a maroon. I got something that kind of looked like Daddy from Jeffree Star and kind of looked like Androgyny. That's what it looked like on the website. These are so streaky. I wore this one, I believe, in a video. I don't think I wore the other one at all because this one was just not good. And the color, right? So, so pretty. But no matter how many times I let it dry down, it is very crumbly in the inner lip. And it just, I had to keep going over it and over it to make it not patchy. The colors are beautiful, they swatch out fine, but when you're really putting it on the lips, it's so streaky. Streaky, like unexcusably, not like another extra finesse on the lips, it's like bad. So I wouldn't buy any more of these. The colors are so pretty. The colors are so pretty, but I cannot even, can't. Another liquid lipstick, which the formula is good. It just reminds me of the NYX liquid lipsticks, which I'm not a fan of because they're very drying. You can put a lip balm on this and be fine. Um, it's the Medusa's Makeup Liquid Lipstick. This is new. We just got it in a subscription box. It is the shade Striptease. I don't know why I just showed you the back of my hand. I meant to show you the tube. This is the shade. It's pretty. I'll probably still wear it. However, it is a pain to get off. Like when I swatched it in that video, we were on... We unbox Medusa's makeup thing it was so hard to get off my hand it was so hard and then I tried to wear some of my lips the other day and I just finished like carving up my bottom lip and I noticed how drying it was and I was like oh no 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 after getting off my hand and it was drying on the same of my lips even with a lip balm underneath it it's very drying but if I was going to go out for the rest of the day and didn't want to bring my lipstick with me or if I was gonna go drinking maybe I'll probably wear this it's the same kind of dryness that I get from the Beauty Bakery liquid lipsticks like you need help getting it off but it's a beautiful color like the color striptease is my kind of color again these aren't terrible products these are disappointing they're not like up to what I was expecting I was thinking about talking about that Millie Rose palette again um, that I talked about in my neutral favorites palette video just didn't feel like dragging that brand again because the mattes were great but the shimmers were just meh so yeah Let's move on. I have two Fenty things here. Do not kill me. Okay? I feel like I'm not allowed to say bad things about Rihanna stuff. So, <sighs> I don't know how to say this. Because I don't know, like, if people know these things or not. So, sometimes you get PR, right? But it's not free PR. It's like, instead of they paying you, they give you a product. So, you get the product instead of a payment for guaranteed work. So, BoxyCharm is doing a box with Fenty. And I was super excited. They're like, hey, will you do like a tutorial on your Instagram? We'll give you the product in exchange for your free video on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, totally. I don't mind doing stuff like that. I don't mind 
Like, if it's something I actually want and it's something I want to try, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. So it's not like it's just free, free stuff. You do have to do work for it, but I don't know if that matters at all. I just wanted to say that. So I did an Instagram look, and I did like the look I came up with using these products. But using them again after that, I just started realizing maybe I'm not crazy about this. So the first thing is the Moroccan Spice Eyeshadow Palette. The packaging is so pretty. And I was so excited to use it for the first time. And I thought the eye look came out cute. But the more I looked at it through the day, it was, was alright. <laughs> It was okay. This is the eyeshadow palette itself. This is on clearance at Sephora for $26, I believe, or at least it was last time I saw it. This is the color scheme. I even left, like, all the, I mean, I'm not going to delete them because they're honest. All the comments thing, like, I decluttered this palette. This palette's for people scared of pigment. That's the kind of comments I got under that video. I was like, kind of. Like, the, the look I came out was cute. I liked it, but... It's just underwhelming. Like, the mattes are fine, but they're not as deep as they look in the palette. And then the shimmers are just like, eh. You know? They don't really, they're not super metallic. They're not also super glittery. They're not toppers, because they do have base pigment to them. But the shimmers in here are just like, I don't know. I used one of these, I think. It's nice. But see, when I put it on my hand, like, we've seen prettier. So, it's underwhelming, but the packaging is gorgeous gorgeous the other thing I really liked the little matte mousse stick lipstick from that video if you guys saw the Instagram video I really enjoyed the lipstick formula like that matte lipstick formula it wasn't super super matte it still had a little bit of shine to it but it was so comfortable like if I was I would never wear a stick lipstick like that leaving my house but I'm just sitting around with makeup on at the house or filming videos. That is so comfortable. And it was so pigmented. Like, Rihanna's stick lipstick little things. Oh my god, I was so impressed. The thing I was not impressed with, because it's disappointing products, disappointing ones, is this. It's the Matchstick and Confetti. So this is the only one that would work for my skin tone. And let me swatch it on my wrist, I guess. Can we see it? Yeah. It's a purple, it's called Aurora. Oh no, it's kind of called Confetti. It gives me like an Aurora vibe, I don't know. It didn't want to go over my foundation, like I stippled it on, trying to blend it on top of my foundation, and then I like tapped it out with my finger and it looked fine, like it looked great. But it was a lot more work putting it on than I was expecting, like it looked fine. It did work. So I didn't feel bad about using it. But I feel like I have other, like even the ColourPop stick, Blushes and highlighters aren't as hard to use, and this isn't even that pigmented. It just seems like a little bit of a purple sheen to the cheek. So I was kind of like, about it. But I do like that they magnetically stick to the other ones. That's pretty cool. So, another highlighter that was disappointing is this one from Makeup Geek. It's called Psychedelic. I don't know if this is one of the new ones or one of the older ones we got in a Try Beauty box, but this is a highlighter I thought I was gonna like. I was like, oh my god, this is so cute. It's so pretty. But when you swatch it, I'm gonna swatch it again just so you know I actually swatched it. Like I, I gave it some. It's a fine payoff. It's right here. But honestly it just looks like pink on my cheek. Like you cannot tell at all. From, like no matter how I turn it, no matter how many times I like angled a different way. Even on the finger, you can't, like, that had it on this finger. You can't even really tell. It just looks like pink on the cheek. It's soft. Like, look how subtle that is. It's soft. It's easy to blend out. But it just looks like pink on my cheek, and it's not even the most pigmented in the world, so I was kind of underwhelmed by this one. And lastly, this is like a half disappointing. So I guess it is disappointing. But this is the Lottie London Stamp Liner. I love the Ciate London stamp liners, and I love the stamps on these eyeliners. So this one's the heart one. The heart's a little weird shape for me, but I love the moon one. Anytime you see me wearing like a little moon stamp, I usually do it under this cheek. It's a Lottie London stamp, and I love their stamps. But it's the other eyeliner side that is just... How do... Let me swatch it between these lipsticks. It's very black. But me, usually I just do like a little eyeliner in here where my lash band stops. Or if my highlighter from Inner Corner Highlight, when I blink and stuff, it gets highlighter in here, I'll like color my eyelash back in black instead of highlighter color. It doesn't have much staying power. In my, I don't know if it's maybe, maybe if my eyes water a little bit. It just doesn't stay very pitch black in there. It really fades in the inner portion of the eye. If 
I do a wing liner with it, it's fine because it's really out there. But it just kind of lackluster for staying power in the inner part of the eye, which is where I wear mostly eyeliner because I don't really do too many wing liners. I think I might try to do them more lately, more often, um, because I am trying to like stay outside my comfort zone a little bit, try some new things, not always do the same thing. So I might do winged eyeliner more often, but the inner portion of the eye where I use most of my eyeliner, it's very fady, not too black. So I'm disappointing, but when you swatch it, it looks great. Anyways, you guys, that is it for today's video. I'm sorry I trashed all these products, but you know, you gotta be honest. Not everything's gonna be great, and that is fine. So... <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make me feel better in the comment section down below. Let me know something lately you've tried and you were disappointed in. I would really love to hear from you down below. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I'd greatly appreciate it if you did that. We could be friends and stuff, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.